Welcome to Module 1 of the Elliott Wave Vertical. This is Elliott Basics. In this learning object, we will learn the foundation of Elliott Wave Theory, basic wave patterns, wave characteristics, an introduction of mathematical applications, three essential rules that must never be broken, how to label the waves. At the end of this module, there will be a quiz Ralph Nelson Elliott developed the Elliott Wave Theory in the 1930s by studying various market indices spanning over a 75-year period. He discovered that stock markets, thought to behave in a somewhat chaotic manner, in fact did not. They traded in repetitive cycles, which he discovered were the emotions of investors as a cause of outside influences or predominant psychology of the masses at the time. Eliot stated that the upward and downward swings of the mass psychology always showed up in the same repetitive patterns, which were then divided into patterns he termed waves. Subsequently, many other Eliot wave theorists have applied his principles to markets other than stocks, such as forex and commodities, with great success. This is to say that the theory is transferable to virtually all traded markets. Eliot's work was published in 1938 in a monograph titled The Wave Principle, which has come to be known as the Eliot Wave Principle. He tied these patterns of collective human behavior to the Fibonacci sequence, or golden ratio, well known by mathematicians and scientists. There will be more on Fibonacci later in this and following modules. In 1953, A. Hamilton Bolton, the founder of the Bank Credit Analyst, published the Elliott Wave Supplement. This annual report was published for the next 14 years until his death. At which point, A. J. Frost, in collaboration with Robert Prechter, took over the supplements, and in 1978, together they wrote the Elliott Wave Principle, considered one of the definitive textbooks on wave theory. Prechter further published several other books on Eliot and his principles. This illustration reflects the wave principle, which is that in any market cycle, waves will subdivide until a complete market cycle is established. As the market unfolds in repetitive wave forms, which are governed by man's social nature, they have predictive value. Waves are patterns of directional movement. Since a wave is any one of the patterns that naturally occur, when we learn these patterns, which is the subject of this course, we will be more apt to recognize market movement as it occurs. One complete cycle consists of eight waves. To start, a movement will unfold in its primary direction in a series of five waves, labeled one through five. This five-wave impulsive sequence is also called a motive wave, or simply a five. The five-wave pattern is followed by a three-wave corrective sequence, also called a three. The impulsive sequence is numbered one through five, and the corrective sequence is labeled A, B, C. In this example, the A, B, C sequence corrects the one, two, three, four, five sequence. Another way of saying this is, at any time a price in the market moves in the direction of the larger trend, it will form a five-wave sequence followed by a three-wave sequence which moves against or corrects the trend. This type of movement also creates the necessary environment for progress in either an upward or downward direction. Fractals are self-similar patterns composed of smaller copies of themselves ad infinitum. It is often associated with recursive operations on shapes or sets of numbers in which the result of the operation is used as the input to the same operation, repeating the process indefinitely. The science of chaos, and specifically fractal analysis, became popular 50 years after Eliot concluded that the progress of the market was fractal in nature by discerning patterns that are repetitive in form. 
Elliott isolated these patterns, or waves, that recur in market price data. These fractal forms, complex shapes which look more or less the same at a wide variety of scale factors, are everywhere in nature. Fractals are found from the coastlines of continents to the courses of rivers, clouds in the sky, branches of plants and veins in their leaves. These fractals, which are self-similar or self-identical patterns, abound. A fractal is a geometric structure that is self-similar when scaled. A branch of a tree is often used as an example. The branch is similar to the whole tree, and if you break a twig off the branch, the twig is similar to the branch. In a true mathematical fractal, this scaling goes on forever. Fractals become clear when we look at occurrences in nature. Examples of fractals in nature are cauliflower and the Romanesco broccoli and the fern. Market movements reflect mass human psychology. These movements form patterns that predict market behavior. Elliot named and characterized these patterns or waves he found in the market data. He also described how they link together to form larger versions of themselves and then link to form the same patterns in the next larger level. When behavior looks similar at various scales of resolution, it is said to be fractal. Elliot waves are fractal with waves embedded within waves, within waves, within waves, etc. For example, have you ever looked at a chart and could not readily determine if they were hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly bars or candlesticks? Look at the chart visual here. This chart could easily be a 15-minute, hourly, daily, or monthly chart when in fact it is a weekly. These replicating wave structures produce a progression of patterns which Elliot called the wave principle. The fractal nature of markets means that patterns repeat themselves in different time frames. Waves of any degree in any series are made up of waves of a lesser degree. Just as nature reproduces in the same patterns of different degrees, so too do market patterns. Notice this five-wave sequence subdividing into waves of a lesser degree found in a smaller time frame. Whether a monthly, weekly, daily, four-hour, hourly, or 15-minute chart, the patterns repeat themselves. This enables one to trade any time frame using the Elliott Wave principle. The basic five-wave structure in a rising market or uptrend consists of three upward movements that are intermediated by two downward movements. This five-wave structure is termed motive. Waves 1, 3, and 5 are called impulsive or motive waves and move in the direction of the trend. And in this example, an uptrend, they are rising waves. Waves 2 and 4 are called corrective waves and are counter-trend interruptions, moving against the trend. This is the basic five-wave count. Then it is followed by the basic three-wave structure consisting of two downward movements that is intermediated by one upward movement, termed corrective. The correction is lettered A, B, C. A five-wave advance or decline is followed by a three-wave move in the opposite direction. The basic rhythm is five waves corrected by three waves, no matter what time frame is being looked at. We call the ABC pattern the corrective sequence. The five-wave advance is the numbered phase, and the three-wave correction is the lettered phase. This sequence remains constant no matter what degree of wave is being analyzed. The basic five-wave structure in a falling market or downtrend will repeat itself in the opposite direction when a complete cycle occurs. As such, a downward wave structure will consist of three downward movements that are intermediated by two upward movements, just as in an uptrend, a complete five-wave pattern moving downward is termed impulsive or motive. 
Then it is followed by the basic three-wave structure consisting of two upward movements that is intermediated by one downward movement termed corrective. The correction is lettered A, B, and C. In an uptrend or rising market, the impulsive wave moves with the predominant uptrend. The corrective wave moves against the predominant uptrend. Can you spot the impulsive and corrective waves in this uprising trend? In a downtrend or falling market, the impulsive wave moves with the predominant downtrend. The corrective waves move against the predominant downtrend. Again, we illustrate how the full sequence works equally in a falling market as it does in a rising one. Wave characteristics are a direct reflection of human market behavior. Wave personalities exist at every level of the wave count. We call the start of wave 1 point 0, where the five wave impulsive sequence ends is called point T for termination. Between point 0 and the end of wave 1, the market is still bearish. Wave 1 is always part of a basing process. There are no momentum clues yet for a change in the trend. The price action is less emotional with little or no volatility as the crowd is still bearish at this point, so the market participants are still in sell mode since no change in trend is evident. Once the first wave has finished, we anticipate a second wave in the opposite direction. Second waves are created by new selling in an uptrend or buying in a downtrend because traders who are selling in an uptrend do not recognize that this up move is a wave one in a new direction. These traders believe wave one is simply another correction in a continuing down move, so they sell at the top of wave one. Wave 2 moves are usually sharp as a result, correcting most of Wave 1. Wave 3 gives us the greatest profit opportunities. Robert Prechter calls Wave 3 a wonder to behold. One way to recognize a Wave 3 is by its steep slope and rocket thrust movement. It is generally steeper than a Wave 1. Wave 3 sometimes seems almost vertical. During Wave 3, the economic background begins to support the move, and fundamental reasons begin to support the technical indicators. Wave 3 is almost always the longest and the strongest with the greatest profit potential. It often extends because the fundamentals improve in a third wave, volume picks up, and the price action is emotional. Once wave three is over, profit taking enters the picture. The most skillful traders who were into the trend the earliest are now sitting on profits. The character of wave four is different from wave two, although still corrective in nature. Most trading whiplashes occur during wave four. Many traders lose money in wave four. Generally, wave four corrections last much longer and do not retrace as much as wave two. Wave five is the final advance to point T, the termination point. In commodity bull markets, they are often characterized by explosive blow-offs, but in currencies and stocks, they are usually not. Wave five is the trader's last struggle to create new high prices. It is not as enthusiastic or euphoric as Wave 3. Generally, the slope of the price line is less steep than in Wave 3. Momentum divergences are evident as the momentum slows, since it is the end of a five-wave sequence. Optimism continues, and this is the best time not to be part of the optimistic herd mentality. In the currency markets, fifth-wave failures are often present as the fifth wave fails to make a new high above wave three because there are too many participants looking for that last move up. 
Corrective waves have their own characteristics as well. The wave A kicks off the corrective move. Whether it's the second, fourth, or simply the ABC following the larger five wave sequence, the characteristics are the same. This is the wave where traders are convinced that this is just a simple pullback before the next leg of the move up in the case of an uptrend. The A wave sets the tone for the B wave move. If A travels in five waves, the correction is likely to go deep as a zigzag move. If A travels in three waves, then the correction is likely to be a flat correction or a triangle. Wave Bs are usually bull traps and sucker plays. After an A wave, especially if it is three waves, the market looks to rebuy the uptrend, not recognizing that the correction isn't over yet. The market gets very euphoric about the continuation of the trend, and the move up is actually quite weak and corrective, a big disappointment. However, a five wave move in wave A followed by a three-wave correction in wave B provides a great setup for positioning for the wave C move down. Wave C is often called the killer wave, for it can be just as strong and long as a wave 3. It knocks all of the long positions out of the way in the case of an impulsive uptrend, but once wave C is done, it is done. Targeting the end of wave C is a good time to go long again. However, a highly profitable trade is to sell the corrective wave B pullback to be able to ride that killer C wave. Introduction to Mathematical Applications Leonardo Fibonacci was an Italian mathematician born in the 12th century. He is known to have discovered the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. The Fibonacci number sequence is a set of numbers after 0 and 1 where each successive number is the sum of the two previous numbers. Therefore, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 is 21. 13 plus 21 is 34. 21 plus 34 equals 55. And as you can see, it goes on and on to infinity. Fibonacci numbers also appear when counting Elliott waves. Waves 1 and 2 equals 2 waves. Now you are beginning to see the repetitive nature of the waves that Elliot first described when he looked at the stock market as a fractal. The complete eight wave cycle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C is really two waves of a larger degree. We can look at it another way as well. Looking at this sequence as waves 1 and 2, we can say that waves of any degree in any series always subdivide into waves of a lesser degree. Specifically, waves 1 and 2 of the daily chart will subdivide into waves of a lesser degree which can be seen on the hourly chart. It is important to mention that Elliot observed in his work that patterns in the market are repetitive in form, but not necessarily in time or amplitude. This brings up a good point, which is that there are three important aspects of wave theory, pattern or form, ratio, and time. Pattern refers to this wave sequence completing a cycle in any time frame. 
and is considered the most important element of the three in wave analysis. However, we will look very closely at ratio analysis and introduce time analysis as well. To summarize, we have subdivided the 8-wave cycle into its subwaves to get 21 waves for the impulse sequence and 13 waves for the corrective sequence. Adding them together gives 34 waves. If we were to break the waves into further subwaves, which add up to 144 waves. A special value related to the Fibonacci numbers is called the golden section. Also called the divine proportion, the golden section is regarded as the reason for aesthetically pleasing harmonious proportions in nature, architecture, art, and music. In the Nautilus seashell, each section subdivides in area to one of the percentages of the golden ratio. In a sunflower, seeds grow in a pattern in distance of the golden ratio. Perhaps the most well-known example is the Vitruvian Man by Leonardo da Vinci. Sometimes called the Canon of Proportions, da Vinci's work illustrates how the human body is subdivided into proportionate percentages. In architecture, the most stable and most eye-pleasing structures incorporate golden ratio percentages. The golden section is obtained by taking the ratio of successive terms in the Fibonacci series. For example, the ratio of any number to its next higher number approaches 0.618. For example, 8 divided by 13 equals 0.615. 13 divided by 21 equals 0 0.619. 21 divided by 34 equals 0 0.618. 34 divided by 55 also equals 0 0.618. As does 55 divided by 89 and 89 divided by 144, and so on. If you plot a graph of these values, you'll see that they seem to be approaching a limit. For math enthusiasts, this limit is actually the positive root of a quadratic equation and is called the golden section, golden ratio, or sometimes the golden mean. The golden section is normally denoted by the Greek letter phi. There are also other properties of these numbers which are worth noting. As discussed, 1 over phi is the inverse of 0.618, which is 1.618. 1 over phi, or 1.618, is also calculated by taking the ratio of any number to its next lower number. For example, 34 divided by 21 equals 1.619. 55 divided by 34 equals 1.618 and 89 divided by 55 equals 1.618. The higher the numbers go, the closer the ratio is to 1.618. Now, take the ratio of alternate numbers going forwards and backwards. The ratios of alternate numbers going forwards approach 0.382, or its inverse 2.618. For example, 144 divided by 55 equals 2.618, and 55 divided by 144 equals 0.382. Here's another example. 34 divided by 89 equals 0.382, and 89 divided by 34 equals 2.618. Take note of these numbers because in the next two modules we will use these ratios in targeting impulsive and corrective sequences. Finally, take the ratio of every third number going forwards and backwards. For example, 89 divided by 377 is 0.236 and 233 divided by 55 equals 4.236. Again, 
All these percentages will come into play when we discuss targeting an impulsive wave or measuring the retracement of a corrective wave. The mathematical application of the golden section on Elliott waves will become apparent in Module 2, Impulsive Patterns, and Module 3, Corrective Patterns. There are three rules of the Elliott wave principle that cannot be broken. The rules that should not be broken are 1. Wave 2 never retraces more than 100% of wave 1. 2. Wave 3 is never the shortest wave. 3. Wave 4 does not enter into the same price territory as wave 1. If any one of these rules is violated, then the operative wave count is incorrect and there must be an alternative wave count to follow. Rule number 1. Wave 2 never retraces more than 100% of wave 1. Wave 2 never goes below point zero, the starting point. In other words, if wave 2 goes below point zero, then it is not wave 2. Rule number 2. Wave 3 is never the shortest wave. When wave 3 is the shortest wave, another count may be in order. Rule number 3. Wave 4 does not enter into the same price territory as Wave 1. This is also known as overlap. When buying in Wave 4, make sure it doesn't go below the top of Wave 1. Labeling of Waves Before we look at some examples from the market, we will talk about the naming convention for counting waves. Wave degrees have names and labels. Primary wave degrees seen on the monthly charts are noted as follows. Circled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, capital A, B, C. Intermediate wave degrees found on the weekly charts are noted as numerals and letters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and A, B, and C in parentheses. Minor wave degrees found on the daily charts are noted as numerals and letters without parentheses. Finally, minute wave degrees found on the hourly charts are noted as circled lowercase Roman numerals 1 through 5 and lowercase a, b, and c. The naming convention used is consistent with Elliott's labeling, as he named nine degrees of waves, which you can see in this chart. Each wave degree subdivides into waves in the smaller degree. Elliott also added degrees as necessary. The numbers label the impulsive waves, and the letters label the corrective waves. The impulsive waves alternate between Roman numerals and Arabic numerals. Labeling below minor degrees is in lowercase Roman numerals. Labeling above primary degrees is in uppercase Roman numerals. The corrective waves are labeled in lowercase for the Roman numerals and in uppercase for the Arabic numerals. The final column in the chart is labeled time frame. Here, we've labeled which wave degree applies to which time frame in the currencies. The weekly charts are the intermediate wave degree, the daily charts are the minor wave degree, the hourlies are the minute wave degree, and the 15 minute is labeled as the minuet degree. It is merely a guide and there are other conventions. Most important to know is whether we are in a five or a three wave sequence than to know exactly how to label the move. Look at a shorter time frame, and suddenly two waves turns into eight waves, and eight waves on a smaller time frame breaks down into 34 waves. The 34 waves includes the five wave sequence, which has 21 waves, and a three wave sequence, which has 13 waves. After a five wave sequence is complete, it will become a wave of a larger degree, or a wave contributing to a larger wave. The complete movement of waves 1 through 5 will complete a wave 1, 3, or 5 of the next higher wave sequence. For example, wave 1 will appear as a straight line on the daily chart, and when broken down on the hourly chart, 
will appear as a five-wave sequence. The complete corrective movement of waves A, B, and C will complete either a wave 2 or a wave 4. For example, the ABC correction can unfold in hourly data, which can be represented by waves 2 or 4 of the daily price data. After a five-wave sequence is complete, it will become a wave of a larger degree, or a wave contributing to a larger wave. The complete movement of waves 1 through 5 will complete a wave 1, 3, or 5 of the next higher wave sequence. For example, wave 1 will appear as a straight line on the daily chart, and when broken down on the hourly chart, will appear as a five-wave sequence. The complete corrective movement of waves A, B, and C will complete either a wave 2 or a wave 4. For example, the ABC correction can unfold in hourly data, which can be represented by waves 2 or 4 of the daily price data. Now we will look at some market examples to illustrate the basic rhythm of the Elliott wave. The first example is the weekly euro chart from January to November of 2005. See if you can count the five wave impulsive sequence waves one through five. Start to envision yourself trading those waves once you have mastered all of the tools that will be made available to you in this course. The five wave sequence starts at 136.66 and ends at 116.40, taking almost a full year to complete. In this slide, notice the five wave sequences followed by three wave corrections. We are looking at the daily euro chart for the same time period as the weekly chart, but we have broken down the five wave sequence into its component subwaves. Again, Elliott found that the wave patterns were self identical in different time frames, as is evident here. Waves 1, 3, and 5 break down into their respective five subwaves in the direction of the trend, which is down. Waves 2 and 4 break down into their ABC three wave corrective patterns, which correct the trend. 21 waves are evident on this chart, but of course we could further label the subwaves and come up with 89 subwaves. This illustrates how the Fibonacci sequence is evident in the wave patterns or form. Now let's talk about market psychology. Let's suppose that in the news on January 2005, most of the news items were very bullish on the euro. In November 2005, the news items were extremely bearish on the euro. That is exactly why the Elliott Wave Principle works because of human emotions. People tend to be the most bearish when the press is very negative and the prices have been dropping for a while. They are also very bullish at market tops, looking for further moves up. In other words, people think in herds and go mad in herds. That produces tremendous opportunity in the markets as long as you are not part of the herd at the wrong time. This is the conclusion of the learning objects of Module 1. Please continue on to the quiz.